proprietary. They have their own proprietary software. It is a challenge to get some DOTs to accept and approve it. I, I know PennDOT, they looked at me like we had uh, witch, witchcraft going on um, because it's not traditional, you know, geotechnical design methods. Um, but they come up with, uh, based on, let's take a cookbook, they come up with how much settlement the owner's going to allow, what's the situation. Obviously, when you're coming in, you can have a couple, you know, maybe an inch or two of long term as in over 100 years of settlement. But when you hit this bridge, there's a tighter tighter tolerance that the owner's going to say, I don't want anything or I want a half inch or no more than something that you can do over a 20-year maybe paving, paving rehab maintenance program to take out that little bit of bump over long term. So that dictates your uh, column spacings and your sizes, but and also your load uh, dictates your column spaces and your sizes. So they come up with a grid, and uh, they bring in a, 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 basically a Bauer drill rig with reverse reverse flighted auger. That when they they spin down, it pushes the soil down and out, not up. And they, they spin down. And there's um, sensors on that auger head that feeds back to a computer monitor and a computer system in the machine, and the operator's trained to read that monitor. And when he hits a certain torque level on that auger, he knows he's hit that stiff soil layer. Uh, at that point, they uh, pump grout down through the Kelly bar to the bottom of that auger. It flops open the flop, and he slowly pulls that auger out, filling that void with the grout. The machine's tracking your yield of concrete going in, generating a theoretical yield report on the way out. And at the end of the day, we can hand the engineer, Deldot, a, a document that shows all the torque ratings on the way down that matches the engineer's report and then a theoretical um, drawing that says, you know, should have took 10 yards of concrete, we have 15 in there for all the voids are filled and, and, and such like that. There's no, um, there's no, no voids down there. And he, you know, when he comes back out, he comes back up to his working layer um, and he just works his way out. Around the, um, around the pile foundation, we had to put some rebar in, just some single sticks of rebar in. They were concerned with the pile loading and all that. It might crack those columns, but traditionally you don't need to do that. Uh, depending on the loading and the settlement, sometimes the, uh, the load transfer platform requires geotextile. Sometimes it doesn't. Up in Pennsylvania, it didn't. Down here, it, it required it just from the amount of settlement that was to be expected. It would actually engage the geotextile. Um, you build your working platform, and then you come on up with your fill. Uh, like any other embankment. Uh, you can do that for MSE walls and everything else, and it's uh, about half the time that the other method, you know, would have cost us and uh, um, generated very little for those spoils. Basically, what we generated, you could just kind of waste on the site uh, in that location. So, Nick, all along you had to manage your uh, hazmat issues? Yes. Focus. So, the, the whole site, both sides, is historically contaminated. Uh, Deldot had an environmental consultant, Brightfields, on site. Um, Brightfields has got a history in the riverfront that's been great. And they basically monitored all our operations. Anybody, any of our guys playing in the dirt had to have an OSHA Haswell for 24 hour training plus eight hour refresher. Um, anytime we touched the dirt, there was an environment. Uh, Brightfields had an inspector on site with uh, PIDs and monitors and sniffers and using their own, um, own training to make sure that we're not getting into anything. Um, hazardous to our men and women um, and uh, fortunately I mean there was some concerns we'd have to go to a uh, level C which would have been respirators and Timex suits and uh, we, uh, we never the closest we got was over here in the footage the east side the west side uh, was uh, surprisingly we didn't encounter anything I think we were high enough but over here with digging out for the, um, the CMC's and the load transport we got into some stuff but never to the point we had to go respirators um, they managed the soils. Uh, one of our contaminated soil stockpile locations is over here. You know, we had to put the soil, uh, we did hit contaminated soils, just not severely contaminated. So they, we put poly down, dumped the soil there, covered it with poly, and then Delmont would have it disposed of. About how deep were the columns? Uh, taking like 60, 80 feet. Um, from, no, that's not a hard number, but about very, very 50 and 80 feet. I don't remember. Oh, it's been a couple years ago. <laughs> Things are starting to slip. But, yeah, and they're about like 12 inch, I think 15 inch and 18 inch. They go from 12, 15, and 18 inch diameters. I think you're 12 to 15 and 12 to 16 inch is your typical diameter size for the grout. Um, and, and it's a typical grout mix, a comfortable grout mix. It's not a high strike or it's not a low strike either, but like a, I think it's like a 4,000 or 5,000 PSI grout mix. So. Once those were installed, the rest of the embankment was placed in the, uh, the walls themselves are just standard MSC walls. Yeah. Uh, 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 u
special needed to be done to the grout due to the caving in soils? No. No. I got an easy one for you. The PSI on the footer, on the uh, piers. PSI concrete? Yeah. Uh, Roughly. No, road, 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 docks, I say. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Um, the bridge guard was about 9,000. Gotcha. Yeah, we use cool. that, uh, that 9,000 PSI for the closure cores as well. So it's pretty yeah. challenging, Max. It, it, when it's sets, it, it sets tightens up. <laughs> anything, special, anything special about it? Rapid set or something? Yeah, it could have been. No, but we wanted the quick. We wanted the quick cure so we sure. could move with the deck. Yeah, no. Did you use a rapid set or something like that? No, no, no okay. just uh, you uh, might, yeah. just traditional. Yep, that's that, high early. From where that dump truck is down, that's the standard. Just surcharge, six month um, surcharge with uh, infinometers, piezometers, uh, cylinder platforms that were monitored. I, I believe it all reacted as you guys had planned it to. Nothing, nothing crazy happened, but it settled about six to eight inches over a, a six month period. Um, to the side through here we had settlement plates installed to monitor the um, mo monitor the uh, how the uh, the CMC system was working up through construction. Um, they were capped off when we um, when we paved the roadway and saw very very little to none settlement. So that worked for plan. But there was a lot of interaction between that and the pile foundation that we had to work for. There was a lot of concerns that the one would affect the other where the drill shafts it wouldn't have been an issue. Um, a significant concern about the, the stability of the soil on this side. Um, so the approach contract is uh, thoroughly under the way with uh, a host of utility issues and such that has delayed the original contract completion date. Um, right now we're looking at midsummer, which would be a couple months behind what the contract originally was. But the original concept term was to have the we knew we were going to have two contracts, this bridge contract and then the mega contract for the approaches. And the way it was originally designed, it didn't work out this way, but for both contracts to end at the same time. That, like Nick said, the, the right-of-way issues and the uh, utility issues on the approaches really slowed down that contract. But it's going to come together pretty soon. So Nick, the uh, post tensioning is keeping the bridge together, or is it the uh, the, the closures also doing? It? I mean, it's a yeah, well, the post tensioning just pulls all the girders together. Yeah. And it's the yeah. girders that hold the, hold the bridge up. And right. the, uh, post tensioning is what gives them their ultimate strength to, to span. To so. <clears throat> take a second to echo something Nick said on the other side. You know. I think the project is a great example of a uh, partnership between the owner and the designer and the contractor. Um, it doesn't always work out that way, but I think in this case, you know, it's a great example of yeah. all this work together. Um, and, and changes or issues and challenges that came up, you know, we, uh, we all work to solve them, not, you know, not, not just point fingers or uh, assess blame or anything. So, you know, the, the result is really outstanding. Uh, Precast Systems out of Allentown, New Jersey. You might know him, Todd. Uh, Ch Chad Saunders from Bayshore. Do you remember him? I, I remember Bayshore. I don't remember him. Yeah, he was like vice president down there. He left about two years before Skanska closed up and uh, went up there. He never he bought out um, the uh, first post to own that. Now he's running that. They do real nice work. They did all our precasting. They precasted our girders. Um, the uh, styrofoam embankment on the far side, they got these concrete facing panels. And uh, a mid project design change, thanks to Mr. Tudor, wherever he is, um, <laughs> went from um, uh, a sandblast pattern to uh, a, an ashlar rock pattern to mimic the bridge, which was the right thing to do. It, it really makes it look much more cohesive over there. But uh, you know, it's a challenge when you got 10, 10 foot wide panels, or various width panels coming down. That you have to match this uh, form liner panel up, and they spent a lot of time to make sure when they casted everything and we set them, the, the grout and mortar lines would flow through all those panels, so you really don't notice 10 in this individual panels. So. They did, yeah, they made the piles, uh, they made our soffit slabs that we poured the pier caps on top of, uh, they made the girders, they made the, uh, the panels on the EPS side. Um, Rico did the uh, MSC wall panels on this side. Q&A, if you think of anything 
Uh, at lunchtime, you'll have your opportunity to ask these guys anything you want. And now that everybody is uh, frozen, uh, <laughs> we'll start walking all the way back or running. No, we can't run. It's a construction area. Well, so as soon as you, leave, as as you get the back. river walk, you can run. <laughs> That's not my liability anymore. Okay, and we'll see you all at uh, lunch. Thank you. Yeah. I like working with Chad. Um, I've used him. I've got to use the musical. By these, a good chance you're going to get your arm torn off. Hope they do something with these damn exposed bolts. Uh, bolts. The uh, nuts and shank.